Walter, we're here at the Midwest LSA Expo. And normally when we're here, you're here with the ICP Savannah. But I see you've got something brand new for me to do an interview with you on. What's this called? Yes, yeah, so actually, uh, um, we still represent the Savannah as well. Uh, this is a new project that we have brought in the United States, which is the, the Tucano replica. Now, this airplane looks a lot like a military airplane. Uh, yes, it is. It's, uh, like you said, it's a replica of the Embraer Tucano that has been de developed in Brazil and adopted in a lot of uh, air forces. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, Texan II that flies from the Air Force and Navy is a derivative of this airplane. So this airplane then has been out on the market for a while? Uh, the company has been out working for about six years. Uh, they've been um, uh, flying a lot of them. Is This ret retractable version is the first one here in the United States, uh, and it's an experimental. So are they in, uh, offering it as an, a light sport aircraft as well? Yes, we're going to have uh, two versions, the LSA uh, that complies with all the regulation of a fixed gear and a fixed pitch propeller, and then the uh, experimental, which allows us to go a little bit faster and increase the maximum gross weight. Now, what type of uh, an airplane kit is it? Um, like, it's an all-metal um, construction? Uh, yes, the construction is all metal. Mm -hmm. Of course, the only fiberglass part will be the cowling in the front, but other than that, it's all metal, drill rivet, pop rivet. And the uh, construction type, is it a um, match hole uh, system? Yes, a match hole is uh, pre-drill, and then you're going to have to put it together, drill it to size, and put the pop rivet in. And how long would that take the average individual? And I would say it's, uh, there are different levels of kits, from the basic, the intermediate, and the quick build. And it goes from anything from 500 hours to 2,000 hours. Depends what stage you get it. Now, is there any jigging involved in this? If you buy a basic kit, yes, for the uh, fuselage, the uh, elevator rather, uh, there are some jigs, very easy to build, which we provide uh, the instruction or we also offer down in Texas a uh, builder assist. We have uh, the metal jig over there, so people can buy a basic, spend a couple of weeks assembling the um, main component and then ship it home with them. And if I were to take, go down to Texas, I do the, uh, the first uh, couple of weeks building the airplane, and I bring it back home, what type of an area am I gonna need to finish this airplane off? Uh, you can, uh, we have a lot of people that uh, finish them in uh, their garage and usually if you already have a hangar in the airport, any tea hangar will fit it in. If uh, you want to wait to get the tea hangar until you actually finish all the installation of the avionics, the electrical, then uh, one car garage will work as a building operation. Of course, you cannot have everything at the same time. You're gonna have to build the wing, put it on the side, <laughs> put the fuselage, put it on the side, and then bring everything at the airport for final assembly. Am I gonna require any special tooling to uh, and knowledge to finish this airplane off? Uh, no, the tooling, like say, uh, probably you're gonna find most of the tool required in any average man toolbox. Uh, the only thing that uh, for somebody that never built before will be a pneumatic, uh, uh, a rivet gun again you don't want to pull you know 20,000 rivet by hand you will have big armrest <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. other than that it requires drills some screwdrivers and nothing that out of the ordinary now what about the building process is it a very difficult is there manuals and pictures and video that I can follow along to yes one of the things that uh, we have done uh, with uh, this airplane after the experience with the ICP and helping people building uh, that uh, the company has spent a lot of time in perfecting the manual I have to say that the manual of this one are probably uh, top of the line there is a lot of picture a lot of step by step and they're actually the same uh, uh, building procedure that we use at the factory to extract our employee for the ready to fly. And we are able to take uh, uh, people that never built an airplane before and make them build wings following this uh, very easy step-by-step -step process. So the airplane is avail available as an LSA and as an experimental. What are the differences between the two? The uh, structure is exactly the same. So the same wingspan, the same structure. Uh, we have a plus six, uh, minus three. Both of them will be uh, proved for some um, aerobatic maneuver. Uh, what we do with the LSA is that we put a fixed gear instead of a retractable gear. 
uh, we put a fixed pitch propeller instead of a variable pitch propeller like this one. We limit the maximum gross weight to uh, 1320 by law, which the uh, experimental goes up to 1750 uh, pounds. Um, and we put only a 100 horsepower engine instead of something more powerful. We've got this airplane then, and uh, I've come down to Texas. I've spent a couple of uh, weeks with you. I've come back home. I've spent another six or seven months, eight months to get the airplane. In Canada, you probably finish in one month. You know? yeah, what else do you have to do in the winter? <laughs> what else have I got to do? Yeah. What type of performance am I going to be looking at out of this airplane then when I've actually got it up and finished? Um, I've been flying this one for the last uh, 70 hours, and uh, two people. Uh, average of heavy belt like me and full fuel uh, with this engine I climb anything between 800 to 1200 foot a minute at about uh, 90 knots uh, the airplane does uh, very well in the loops and ailerons and uh, very stable in the maneuver uh, you can carry uh, about uh, 700 pounds of useful load no problem uh, when you go out on the LSA uh, again, your speed is going to be reduced to 120 by um, uh, you, certification. You by yes. uh, pitching the prop and that Yeah, we pitch the prop uh, yeah. lower. And then we have to limit your maximum gross weight uh, to 1320. So in order to stay there, we only put a 100 horsepower engine, which will reduce your climb in about 800 foot a minute. And the loop and still nice, but it's going to be a little bit longer and <laughs> less tight, so you're going to have a higher uh, uh, speed. You're still going about 120, uh, maybe a little bit more. We, you know, we, we try to keep it 119, but sometimes <laughs> we. we now, control systems on it were what, uh, stick and rudder uh, control? They're all stick and rudder. Uh, the, uh, they're controlled both from the front and the back. Uh, according to what your preference has, you can put more or less instrumentation in the back. Uh, my preferred configuration is with uh, toe brakes in the front and differential steering and just have a handbrake in the back. Uh, you do whatever you have to do and it's easier to install. Um, the nose is steerable. So it's uh, very easy to go in uh, tight uh, parking spots. Now, is there any adjustability built into the airplane for short guys like me or taller guys? Yes, the uh, plane uh, will have a range of position for pedals and brakes and for seats. It's not something that you can change in flight, but it's something that you can uh, do before you take off. So uh, you can basically move the seat back and forward and the uh, pedals back back and forth. Now, the airplane looks hot, but flying characteristics wise, is it a, a mellower airplane than what it looks? The, the airplane is it's interesting because, like I say, it's fast, but this one stalls with full flaps at 35 knots. So uh, the airplane is, the stall characteristics are very, very mellow uh, and, the, uh, and very easy to handle. Uh, so they have a very big range of, of speeds you know in order for us to comply with the lsa we put the extra foot and so it works very nice so the airplane is uh, fast maneuverable but it's not uh, jerky and nervous to fly around the person that flies a 172 should have no problem flying that so, so it's a uh, fairly gentle then when it, gentle. you mentioned stall there is no dropping of a wing or anything like it's, that it's it's very very useful. of course you know if you don't put the ball in the middle all this stuff is going to go to the left <laughs> but that's with any airplanes okay. so how many of these airplanes are actually out and flying in the world now i think that uh, in total we are close to 30. i have to call the factory and verify exact exact number but i don't think we passed 30 units and if I wanted to get one of these airplanes, what type of delivery times am I looking at? Uh, depends uh, what time you ask me that question. So at the moment, you know, in the storage in the in the Texas, we have a basic and intermediate and a quick build kit ready for delivery. So at the moment, would be as fast as you come to Texas, you can take one home. Uh, we usually like to keep a couple of them uh, basic, at least a couple of them basic in stocks to for supplying for parts. Uh, the only problem we have verified both with the Savannah and with this airplane is that people have a lot of hangar rash So I have to deliver rudders and elevators and stuff like that or people we have motorcycle that run into an airplane So we like to keep a couple of fuselage a couple of parts uh, So that uh, we can uh, supply that and if somebody wants something real fast 
we maybe ship one of those kit out. Okay. And what about uh, sales and service? Are you going to strictly sell from Texas, or are you setting up a dealer network? How's that work? Uh, no, the company is structured with having an importer that will be down in Texas, and then we'll have a set of dealership that uh, will uh, divide the United States. At the moment, we already have uh, dealers in the Philadelphia area for the Northeast, and we have dealers in uh, Detroit for the Northern Midwest side. Okay. And we, of course, we're looking for dealers all over the country. Dollars and cents wise, how, what are someone looking at to start a kit like this off and then if someone were to go to the experimental and have one finished, what kind of money are they looking uh, at? Well, there is an old uh, uh, rule of thumb in the uh, experimental and they say you're probably going to spend one third for the engine, one third for the avionics, and one third for the airplane. And we kind of fall in that category. So you're probably going to spend about $50,000 for the basic kit, uh, and then another, you know, 20 or 30 for the engine, and another 20 or 30 for the avionics. I think you can build one by yourself for around about $100,000. Uh, again, depends how fancy you want to go with the avionics. Or uh, the factory build LSA, it's around 125. So if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, get a little more information, what's the easiest way to do that? Uh, the best way is to go with um, our website, flylegendusa.com. Okay. So we're down here at the uh, Midwest LSA show, which uh, Chris Collins is putting on, and this is quite a show that he puts on here. Hey, Chris does a wonderful job. We've been here for many years, and it's our favorite show to come in. Uh, the atmosphere is great, the service is outstanding, and is. Uh, uh, made with passion from a person that loves flying. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure is all mine. If you want to get uh, more information and more videos, visit www.ultralightflyer.com. Thanks for spending the time with us here at the Midwest LSA Expo.